lots of car seat theater with Lisa Carver and uh, the Cusack sisters, Jen and Maddie. And there's Sadie, Lisa's daughter back there. And uh, we're talking about things we can talk about on camera. Lisa's been talking about a whole bunch of things that she can't, she won't talk about on camera, but now she's gonna talk about something on camera. Can we talk about how, how you stopped doing drugs because you wanted to save your youth? You should talk to the Cusacks because I've done like a 5,000 interviews and in uh, I haven't stopped yet. You haven't, <laughs> I haven't stopped, stopped yet? yet? Yay! But I don't buy drugs. You don't buy them? No, I don't buy drugs. Is that because you're, you're craftier because you're a, a young and good looking female? It's because I'm a young, good looking female so I can just get them. So you get guys, you get guys that want to like hook up with you to buy drugs for you? No, 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 not or, that dark. Or girls it's just that if I go out and I want to do drugs and I see people doing drugs, I can ask them. Okay. And you're from Detroit. Now tell us about the scene in Detroit. This is Madeline that's talking right now, by the way. Um, well, there's a lot of different things going on. There's like art bros and there's noise bros. We're talking about styles of music. Yeah, the, yeah. There's a lot of noise and there's a lot of uh, kind of like cheesy garage rock kind of people. And can you snap those that windows closed, Sadie? Please, while we're, while we're on the road here and do this. And this, of can you roll up the window like a little, please? There's a lot of rap and hip hop, but the scenes are kind of segregated, obviously. And also, there's a lot of like black hipsters, but even that's like segregated. So the black hipsters have like their own places to go, and the white hipsters all hang out in the same places. And you know, there's a few, you know. So it's not like white sprinkled in. It, it, the uh, the 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 whole um, reputation of Detroit being a, a black ghetto. It's not like an all black ghetto. No, it's mostly empty. Yeah. And, and you got you got a you got a white um, mayor right now. He's trying to revitalize it, right? Didn't, didn't they have to like put an yeah, emergency Mayor white? Duggan. Emergency he, white well, man. I don't know. Everyone's really jaded and cynical in Detroit because they always make the wrong decision. Like the person who makes decisions for Detroit is like like Governor Snyder and these like Oh, they crazy, hate him. Yeah. They want him to go to jail. Water guy, like the worst person in the entire world. And also these three billionaires make all the decisions for Detroit. They, they, like live, they live in Detroit, they're like big fat cat, they don't, political I don't think, boss. I don't even think they live in Detroit, yeah. they just like own everything in Detroit. And well, anytime anybody tries to own anything in Detroit that, you know, could possibly make any like real money, they like destroy them. What, what, what are their names? Mike Illich, Dan Gilbert, and um, Maddie Maroon, who's like this like basically like Irish mafia guy. Dan Gilbert is like owns Quicken Loans. Where the the Republican National Convention was in Cleveland in the Quicken Loans arena. So he owns a ton of stuff in the Midwest. So he's probably a Trump supporter. Yeah, and Mike Illich owns um I think he owns like the Tigers or the Pit uh, the Pistons or the Red Wings or something and he keeps building new arenas. That's so cool that you know all those names. Yeah, you're very you're very aware of what's going on in your hometown in the state, right? It's just so, it, you can't help but like be a little bit politically aware if you live inside of Detroit because you just, it's like in your face all the time. Like it's it's a city that barely runs, like it barely runs. It's so shameful. How's the people that are actually from there, like for the black people that live there and couldn't afford to move out when white flight happened, the, their living conditions are so shameful. How, how is it going to, Recover. I mean, there's I no know. GM's not going to come back. Nobody cares. I care. <laughs> yeah, you care, but you're not like a man with a like a billion dollars. You don't know that, Maddie. <laughs> oh, well, maybe you are a man with a billion dollars. I like living this way because I want to be around the common people. Yeah. Um, no, but I mean, the the, the next phase for it is probably they're going to tear down all those blocks and blocks and blocks of of uh, vacant homes and, and let let the let nature take over again, right? Uh, that's what Mayor Duggan's trying to do. He's trying to finish this project to, uh, like, tear down. Because nobody's got the money to move into them and restore them. Yeah, because they're that basically can't be done. only, like, most of them are, like, lost causes. Like, these houses are so damaged. And aren't, Chinese, aren't Chinese business people buying up huge acreages? 
like I don't know probably uh, that's what I've read that they're buying up like a hundred acres at a time all over the place just as a as an investment like a what if you know because there's no skin off their back because uh, you can buy it for like a hundred thousand dollars yeah yeah you can buy like really historical buildings in Detroit for a hundred thousand dollars yeah sit on that for 10 years 20 years and then it might triple your money or something yeah better than keeping so a job for that long abandoned acres and acres of land like there's so many crumbling hospitals and subdivisions where maybe like two people out of like a thousand houses live are you committed to Detroit, Maddie and Jen? Are you guys gonna, are you lifers? Are you gonna live there I'm for the rest of your life? Uh, no, I'll go anywhere, but I won't necessarily like it. I think you guys can open your window if you're dying back there because we're at a standstill. Um, yeah, the, the wind won't be as noisy if you want to open that, click open that window. I like Detroit. I don't know. It do, I don't have any reason to move right now unless something. Unless I have a reason to move. Which, Something better comes along. Or if I like have some sort of job opportunity somewhere else, but I like Detroit. It's, it works for me. Hmm. So. I think it's really good for you because like you always find so many people to film and you know whatever project you have going on, you yeah. always find. Oh a ton yeah, of there's so many. There's so many people that want to do things. Yeah, everybody's usually game for stuff. It's really fun. I just have fun there, and it's cheap so it's really easy and comfortable now that you're married and you're gonna be moving to Parompli so are you gonna be spending more time in Parompli or are you gonna be going to Las Vegas a lot oh I, I want to live in Parompli really? I want to live in the desert and like, away from all know. the people yeah all the tinsel and all the fake people um what do you like about Parompli you were saying last night something about you like it's kind of a kind of seedy low income and it's no it's not it's not or a low income it's like it's surrounded by it's in a valley and it's surrounded by mountains and sky it's a really big beautiful sky it's like this sky actually it's not that far from here it's like the sky yeah I mean this sky is so open you don't realize it until you leave California or Nevada it's like you have out. a different sky in, in the East Coast yeah yeah it's all closed in with buildings and like this chemtrails everywhere <laughs> how they control you no um but but you like the geography yeah i like Just the geography and i like the nature like mostly like retired cowboys in front and so i like that I like salt that. of the earth type people i don't think so is that like what is the salt of the earth isn't that more like midwestern i think that salt of the earth type people are like people that are characters and Rolling Stone songs from um, the uh, Exile on Main Street era. I thought they were like hard working, yeah. you know, middle class, like blue collar people. Mm -hmm. No, that's not them. These are guys like really into independence and. Oh, okay, libertarians. They're, um, they're, uh, uh, what is the sovereign citizens people? Do they have guns? Do yeah. they like their guns? They all have guns. Are they, are they Bible thumper gun people or are some they? Some of them are, some of them are not. I mean, I haven't met each and every Perumpian. <laughs> no, Is that the, a name he coined right now? Yeah. <laughs> but the, in general, like, people are just really laid back, old, they have a cowboy hat on, they know how to fix things, they're really... I would just... have never pictured you doing that, moving into that environment. All, all for over the 20 years that I've known you, you, I always associate you with, like, the Boston, Dover, New England area. That's, that's pretty cool you're making that change. That's, yeah, I'm that's really, quite a thing. I'm excited. Really? That's good. Yeah. Right on. They have well, different folks, heard trees it here first. there. They have different birds, different bugs. You're getting into it. Yeah. Totally new environment. And Sadie, you wouldn't have allergies there. Because there's, there's not as many grasses that she's allergic to? Yeah. Well, the, the traffic's getting a little bit faster now, so I'm gonna I'm gonna click off because somebody might pull in front of me like this guy, and I don't want to rear-end it with my precious cargo girls here. So thank you, folks, for tuning into this uh, episode of Reviewer TV. Say goodbye, folks. Yay! And um, we'll see you next time for Car Seat Theater, maybe uh, when we're in L in LA or something, some other area.